Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn what is V model. So we have already understood about the waterfall model in the previous tutorial of a software development life cycle. So there is a waterfall model uh, that teams use to follow. And because of the disadvantages that we have discussed in the waterfall model, V model got evolved. So the major disadvantage in waterfall model was around the delay in the feedback, right? Or the testing phase was delayed a lot in that particular waterfall approach. So if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, please go ahead and watch it first before you come to the V model because both of them are interrelated and V model is a improvement over the issues that were there in the waterfall model. So you need to understand waterfall model first before you are able to understand what V model is. So as you can see on my screen, the V model, as the name suggests, it's in the shape of V rather than the waterfall approach, wherein all the phases were one after the other. V model is a bit of an improvement, even though there is still the phased approach and there are, you know, um, phases after the other, one after the other, but still there are corresponding phases of testing for each of the development phase or the requirement phase. So let's understand what exactly V model is and how software development happens when the team is following the V model. So the first phase of V model is the requirements gathering phase, which is very similar to SDLC or you know waterfall approach. So requirements is the first uh, source of truth for any software development team to start working on any of the coding uh, or development activity. So once the requirements are available, so requirement gathering, so in that particular phase, in the software, in the waterfall approach, there was no test involvement at that particular phase. So once the requirements got frozen, only then the development activity or the design activity started in the waterfall approach. Now, because of that, the defects that could have been found in the requirement phase itself were delayed until testing or, or the deployment happened. To overcome that, V model was introduced and in this, if you see, there is a corresponding involvement of test team. So as soon as the requirements are available, testing team starts writing the user acceptance tests. Okay. So what the testing team does is they go through the requirement and based on those requirements, they start documenting their test cases or basically at this level, they can understand what the high level requirements are and based on that, what customer is looking for. And when they understand those requirements, they go through those requirements, they are involved into the discussion with the team, with the customer, then they can write the user acceptance test cases. and when they are writing the test cases, they come up with any of the gaps that might be there in the requirement gathering phase. So that's the, um, you know, first involvement or the first within the first phase itself, the testing team is involved in writing the user acceptance test cases. Now, once the requirement are being gathered, and if you can see here after the requirement phase, then the system analysis and design starts. So when we say system analysis in the V model, it's basically say, for example, you are developing a banking uh, application uh, for, for uh, distributing the cards, say for example, right? So when you say uh, the credit card or debit card, it's, it involves the complete life cycle. And there are different number of systems that are involved. So you will have a system to, um, you know, Long, uh, to originate the card or a person or customer will come to originate or apply for the card, right? Once they apply for the card, then that card application goes into the backend system where there will be business process and the processing will happen. Once the processing is happened, then the card goes for embossing, so the physical card, right? So that goes to any third party or third system. So those systems are usually not maintained by the banks, right? So bank uh, has the tie-up with other system, other companies who do the card embossing or create the physical cards and send those. Similar is the case with the, uh, you know, all those uh, letter generation and all. So if that is the case, there are different, you know, uh, companies involved and systems involved to 
produce the physical car to produce the letters etc then that understanding comes into the system analysis so how that particular software will interact with other underlying system that happens in the system analysis and design and once that system analysis is in progress testers can at the same time write their system test cases all right so what system test cases will do is they will test or those test cases will target the end-to-end -end system right so they'll target when all the systems different systems third-party systems are integrated and how the overall testing will be performed in the end-to-end -end integrated system be it you know like third-party system or internal other systems that are you know available or involved in that particular software development right the next phase is basically the global design when we say global design so now you have understood about the system test cases so system test cases will have integration with other systems as well right but most of the time when you talk about the actual core development it's basically you are developing an application and then that application might integrate with other systems okay so that's what we do in system analysis and design but the global design is how you will design that core application okay so if i say uh, launching a new card so what all is required in the core system of the bank to launch a new card or new credit card so that goes into the global design wherein the tech architects will understand what all is required in the core system to be changed and implemented right so that is what happens in the high level design and in the system design and analysis system analysis and design along with that you know uh, you that software or the core design they think about how that system the new application they are building will integrate with third party systems or other systems that's what happened in system analysis phase so in the global design phase once the global design is ready how the system will be implemented or the software will be implemented in that particular you know um, that application uh, then in that phase itself what testing team do is they write their integration test cases right so they write integration tests all right so now with this phase the test team is also involved to write whenever the design is happening they write the integration test cases and once the actual code is ready they'll execute those test cases similarly when it comes to the detailed design or the module level design so when we have the high level design and then the developers will need to uh, develop small modules to make it you know like the overall software so they won't develop everything all at once so once the software design is there they will break it down into smaller modules and then team will start developing those modules or developers will start developing those modules that is what happens in the detailed design or module level design so module level design during the module level design the testers will go through the module level design and they will write their unit tests right so unit tests so usually most of the time you will see unit tests are written by the development team but there might be possibility that if you are a white box tester you might be required to write the unit test cases if you are a tester uh, or white box, box tester in the team right <clears throat> so this is what happens in the detailed design or the module design so unit test cases are being written for the unit test phase now once all these design phases are complete then comes the coding phase so once the design is ready or the low level design is ready then the developers will start coding for those smaller modules and once those modules are ready then the test team because they have already written the test cases through going through the documentation they will start testing or doing the unit test right so once the code is ready the execution will start so the actual execution will happen the application will be launched so in the unit test case there will be tools used to do the unit test and if uh, it is one done by developers then they'll do it otherwise if you're a white box tester you will actually execute the code whatever developers have coded for those modules and you will run the unit testing once a couple of modules are ready and they are integrated okay so a couple of modules in the application are ready and they are integrated say for example 
um, in the cards. Uh, so we are trying to launch a new card, right? So, so there will be a couple of modules. So apply card, right? So apply card. And even in the apply card, there could be, you know, apply card uh, with minimal details. So say, for example, minimal customer details. All right. So say, for example, this is considered as one module. So what, uh, you know, you will do is in the unit test, this particular module, you will have a test case which will have the minimal details into that particular module and as part of the unit test, they will test this module only, okay? Similarly, when there are a couple of modules ready, so uh, apply card is ready and then uh, this apply card module, once the card is applied, then the card details need to save into the database, right? So this could be another module where there, are, there is some work that has been done and a little bit integration between the front end and back end DB has been done. So if these two modules are integrated, that's what happens in the integration testing. So there are a couple of modules that have been worked upon. If they are integrated, then integration testing starts. Okay. So this is what the testing team will do in if a couple of modules are integrated, they will start integration testing once all the modules are completed, integration testing has been completed, then they'll target at the system level. So the whole software has been developed. Now, how that software or application is integrated with other third party systems or other systems, that what happens in the system testing. So the test team, because they have already written system test cases, they'll start executing system testing uh, or executing those test cases. Once system testing is passed, then, user acceptance testing which is mostly done by people from the business or you know customers involvement which targets about whatever has been built in the system whether that is fit for use or that meets the customer requirement so that's what is done into the user acceptance testing and because user acceptance test cases have been written during the requirements phase then user acceptance testing um, can use the same test cases to execute the test in the user acceptance testing phase, right? So this is a brief introduction of the V model and how V model will be advantages as compared to the waterfall approach that we have seen. So waterfall approach, the disadvantage was the testing involvement was very late and in order to overcome that, the V model was introduced and testing team was introduced in every phase of the development life cycle and because of that lot of defects were identified early in the life cycle so because testing team is involved in every phase so they can provide the feedback or inputs for the defects in each and every phase rather than just waiting for the testing at one particular stage of software development life cycle all right so um, that's all about the V model in SDLC or um, software development lifecycle. Hope this was helpful. Um, in the next tutorial, I'll talk about the iterative development model. So that's all for this tutorial. Please do share and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.